actually one of the main objectives of the, of the SPRINT project would be the identification and qualification of biomarkers that may be used uh, for uh, standard practice uh, in uh, people with uh, physical frailty and sarcopenia. Um, first, I would like to disclose my potential conflict of interest. Um, so why do we know we, do we need biomarkers for, for these conditions? Uh, obviously for screening, uh, for early diagnosis and staging of severity, treatment planning and monitoring, tracking the disease progression and prognostications. So I'll give you uh, with a, a, a scheme the idea underlying this, this slide. So let's pretend that we have Let's pretend that we have a, a perfect biomarker. Let's pretend. <laughs> that we have a, a perfect biomarker that faithfully uh, tracks the physiological reserve of a person. And we have uh, two possible scenarios, two opposite scenarios. A successful aging profile and accelerated aging profile. As you can see, the successful aging person maintains an adequate level of function throughout his lifespan, and the uh, occurrence of sarcopenia physical effect is compressed at the very end. So this is not a really interesting case for us geriatricians. So let's let's forget about this person and, and focus on the second uh, on the second class, which is who is very unlikely. Uh, this person has a steeper decline in uh, physiological reserve and sudden drops uh, induced by precipitating events such as a fall, uh, pneumonia, or whatever else, and crosses the threshold for physical frailty and sarcopenia and keeps going down until it crosses the threshold for disability. Okay. Say that we have this bike. So we may catch the person here when the first uh, decline occurs. So we can ideally identify the underlying cause and uh, uh, keep the, the person back to shape. Or we can catch the person right here when it crosses the threshold for physical threat and sarcopenia. In this case, we, may, we, are, we are in the position of implementing a primary prevention strategy slash Every secondary prevention. Secondary prevention would be implemented here. Not much to do down there, where the only option may be rehabilitation. So let's go back to the real world now, uh, because unfortunately that, that biomarker does not exist, and these are the reasons why we don't have a good biomarker for sarcopenia. The two conditions are multifactorial. Phenotypes are highly heterogeneous, the pathogenesis is only partially known. There are multiple mechanisms that are likely to be simultaneously involved in the progression of sarcopenia and physical frailty, meaning that possibly we have multiple biomarkers that may be equally valid at, at a certain time. On the other hand, sarcopenia and physical frailty, such as the majority of chronic degenerative diseases develop over the course of decades, and pathogenic processes may not necessarily be the same during their progression, which means that a biomarker that is good in a stage may be completely useless in another stage. And the last point is probably the most, the more important. There are too many operational definitions of sarcopenia physical frailty and the phenotypes this condition uh, uh, recognized are only partially overlapping. So it is not by chance that uh, uh, as Professor Bernabe, first Matteo and Francesco uh, later on uh, stressed the, 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 the achievement of the SPRINT project in producing a new and standardized operational definition of physical frailty in Sarcopenia, which ideally uh, will overcome all the limitation of presently available definitions. So this is not related to my talk, but I just wanted to uh, 
uh, give you another reason why biomarkers are not still robust. Going back to the biomarkers, there are of course many possibilities that may be used uh, in inflammation, oxidative damage, antioxidant, apoptosis, nutritional parameters, hormones, and so on. But as you can easily see, all these biomarkers have many limitations. So let's go, for instance, to the biomarkers that we can measure directly in muscle tissue. This is the, these are the results of a study we conducted at the University of Florida back in 2012, where we showed that a set of apoptotic proteins uh, was predictive of muscle volume and uh, gait speed in older adults. And uh, it is interesting to note that the protein, apoptotic protein, were related to mitochondrial pathways and to the inflammatory pathway regulated by TNF alpha. So this, this study gives some uh, insights uh, with regard to the possible pathogenesis of sarcopenia, but of course it's not doable in clinical practice. Uh, this is another study from our group uh, where we show that gait speed and the protein expression of pgc one alpha, the master regulator of mitochondrial biogenesis, are correlated. The higher the expression of PGC1 alpha, the faster the gate speed. Again, <coughs> mitochondria and mitochondrial biogenics may be really crucial for the maintenance of muscle health in old age. But as we saw with regard to, to apoptosis, this assay requires a muscle biopsy, which is not obviously feasible in, in clinical practice. Next, uh, this is an ideal companion of the previous study, in this, in this case, the authors showed that ATP production uh, is correlated with walking speed. So again, mitochondrial biogenics seem to be highly important for maintaining uh, muscle function. But those biomarkers, as I said, can only be retrieved uh, through muscle biopsy, so uh, we obviously cannot propose uh, muscle biopsies to our patients. Uh, more, imp more important uh, is the C-terminal aggregate fragment. This is a, a biomarker that's been studied quite actively over the, the past few years. Uh, I see uh, Michael Dry sitting there, uh, who was one of the first to publish uh, a paper on, uh, on CAF. A CAF is the C-terminal fragment of aggregate uh, protein uh, necessary for the assembly of the synaptic apparatus at the neuromuscular junction. An excessive agent cleavage, which is marked by the increased levels of, uh, of uh, agent fragment, is an expression of neuromuscular degeneration, fiber innervation, and fiber atrophy. And we know that innervation is one of the most important pathogenetic mechanisms. Uh, underlying sarcopenia. And indeed, what my, uh, Michael showed, uh, levels, uh, serum levels of calf, oops, uh, serum levels of calf were correlated uh, with epidemic limb body mass, at least in men. So then we decided to, uh, to see whether this body marker could work in a completely different setting. And we decided to perform a study on hip fracture patients, which is an extremely vulnerable population. And to our surprise, CAF was a good biomarker for sarcopenia in such a special population, meaning that the biomarker is not too much influenced by the severity of the clinical condition. And uh, one more study on CAF from our group. These are community dweller, frail, and multimorbid older people. So again, CAF works in, a, in another uh, setting. So um, I should say that CAF is quite a robust biomarker for certain one of the best available so far. Uh, the plasma initial protein 72 is another biomarker that's been proposed uh, a few years ago. Uh, I'm not aware of any follow-up study uh, on this biomarker, and to be honest, it didn't work in our hands, so we're not going to pursue this biomarker in, in our lab. 
Uh, the antimicrobial of type 2, type 3 collagen is an interesting biomarker, meaning, in the meaning that it is not a biomarker for muscle atrophy, rather it is a biomarker for muscle anabolism. So it may be worth measuring this uh, biomarker uh, at baseline and after intervention to um, have a gist of uh, the efficacy of the intervention. There are also biomarkers that are completely unrelated to muscle, but are linked to the aging process as a whole. Uh, this is a study we published last year, where we show that uh, ten near peripheral blood molecular cells are correlated with muscle mass in uh, outpatient uh, uh, geriatric patient. Uh, I would like to draw your attention on the fact that this ten near not related with either frailty or um, by Fried or frailty by Rockwood, once again underline limitations on currently available biomarkers. The T3 uh, creatine is a special biomarker. Uh, this biomarker does not tell us anything about what is going on in the muscle in terms of function, but it produces a highly reliable uh, estimation of total body muscle mass. The agreement uh, with MRI derived uh, muscle mass is virtually perfect. Nothing to say about that. Also the sensitivity to changes is uh, amazing. Two main problems with this biomarker. First, it provides an estimation of total muscle mass where sarcopenic researchers always would like to have a pedigree mass as a measurement of muscle mass. And the other drawback is the lack of information of any possible problem why muscle mass may be reduced. So, uh, based on these premises, uh, we, we can say that biomarkers that are currently available are weakly associated with clinical development outcome and are poorly standardized. And probably there is not a single biomarker that is able to catch the heterogeneous phenotypes of sarcopenia and physical frailty. So in this scenario, uh, one possible strategy may be the multivariate, multidimensional modeling of a panel of complementary biomarkers. Such a strategy is probably the best to capture the complexity of sarcopenia physical failure. I'll give you a couple of examples. This is a study we published uh, last year uh, where we show that by um, uh, um, partial least square disc discriminant analysis, we were able to categorize all the people with different level of physical performance and to assign to each group a specific cytokine uh, profile. So people working faster than 0 0.8 have a specific uh, cytokine profile, which is completely different from that of people uh, much lower than that. Uh, this is a very recent paper uh, by Pedersen showing that there are at least six biomarkers that are consistently associated with uh, low physical performance across a number of studies. Um, and this is a, this is unpublished, uh, unpublished observation by our group. Uh, where we adopted a multi-block PLSDA modeling using uh, 14 cytokines, muscle strength measurement, and body composition. So the model correctly classified old people and young people. But within all people, and this is the amazing part of this model, the model was, uh, was able to distinguish clearly person with different level of functioning. So the model was absolutely blind to this information. So what can we do with such a model? For instance, we might uh, build a multivariate control chart. So this is a person in a normal level of functioning, same person. Everything, everything is OK. Uh, at a certain point, the person crosses a, a, a control line, something is going wrong. And uh, the only way to, give, to, to obtain this information is by uh, constructing these highly complex statistics. So to conclude, 
uh, with the current state of science, the only recommendation is to adopt a multidimensional assessment to capture different domains of the Korean physical frailty and to obtain information about the underlying of the physiology. Biomarkers must be uh, clinically uh, relevant and be sensitive to changes. Biomarkers also, and more importantly, need to be validated in the real world. Uh, sarcopenic and physical failure, such as multimorbid individual patients with coexisting uh, muscle atrophy conditions and across different healthcare settings. I would like to acknowledge all my collaborators and, of course, funding agencies, IMI, the Italian Ministry of Education and Research, and the Achille Lindau Results Study Center. Thank you for your